podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. Our guests today are Sadie O'Neill, Deputy Director of Data Science, and James Fiorentino who is the senior research data science, both from 26 Technologies. James, Sadie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. So guys, we, we've got a lot to cover, mostly about the work that you're doing at 26 Technologies, but we always like to start with a quick introduction so the guests know who they're listening to. Um, Sadie, I'll start with yourself. Could you give us a little bit of an overview of your background in technology and, and your path to becoming the Director of Data Science for 26, and then we'll come to yourself, James, for, for similar. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a little bit of a non-traditional path here. So after grad school, I studied psychology and statistics and then went to the Army Research Institute for a, a short bit and then went over to the Gov tech space doing assessments and working with some different uh, teams across survey methods. And we also have a large amount of data in one of our products that I'll talk about. And so we work on helping people make insights uh, and make use of that data and coming from that psychology statistics world. And um, one of the things that I, I really enjoy about working at T6 is that we work across a, a ton of different projects and on a ton of diverse topics. Over to you, Jim. Sure. So I similarly had a non-traditional approach to how I wound up here. My training was actually in oceanography and ecology. But during my graduate work, I was exposed to computer science and machine learning in the form of, uh, we had a custom image classifier that we used to classify pictures of individual cells in seawater into different groups. So working with that was how I got exposed to machine learning and data science. And then that translated well to when I, when I first came to 2.6 as, a, as an intern working on an image classification project, then later transitioned to, to a full-time employee. But I've really enjoyed the, uh, the problems we get to work on here, the different types of technology, and they've been willing to allow me to uh, fill in the knowledge gaps that I didn't have coming in, but I did have a strong background in uh, applied statistics and dealing with large data sets um, because in oceanography, we pretty regularly work with, you know, huge data sets across time or, or, or space, which um, all of which I think tr translated really well um, to my position here. Excellent. And we'll get to your position in a bit more detail in a moment. But Sadie, I want to come back to you first. Tell us about 26 te Technologies, who you are and the solutions that you provide. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really a next generation national security platform. And we consider our strategic advantage really the the team here. And so we, at the core, build, deploy, and implement innovative products. And we work for DARPA, Department of State, US Cyber Command, Department of Homeland Security, and we do work that matters for these groups. And the thing that we rally around that brings us all together is solving hard problems for them. So our products are applied to really complex operations and situations. We have a five main products in the suite. The one that Jim and I work most closely on is Pulse and M3. So these are the two products in the Information Advantage Business Unit. And Pulse is a technology platform that enables data collection and two-way engagement with hard to reach communities. So we use Pulse to enable full spectrum operations in the information environment. And we use proprietary data, AI-powered technology, and that infused expertise that I mentioned to decode foreign government efforts to manipulate media. We work with a lot of censorship, disinformation, and propaganda campaigns with those two products. The other ones I wanted to mention briefly are Ike, which is a planning and execution platform where we use machine learning to improve human understanding and command of the all domain battlefield. So this is currently deployed to support the cyber mission forces in the US and around the world. 
We also have SIGMA, which is real-time network detection for chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosives, so CVERN threats. And that's in use today to protect citizens and critical infrastructure in uh, U.S. metropolitan areas. And then we also have Trusted Keep, finally. So we this is a security platform that we use to protect sensitive data at scale with object-level encryption. And this is in use by the intelligence community and they use it to enable zero trust architecture. Very interesting. Jim, I want to come back to you then to to get better understanding of what role the data science team plays in, in each of these uh, different uh, products and services that you offer. So can you describe the, the data science team? Give us a, a bit more of a look behind the scenes of, of what you and your colleagues are working on. So as a team, the data scientists at 2.6, our goal is mainly to help our customers and analysts distill and identify the story that the data they're interested are telling so that they can use it or react to it effectively. With such a large volume of data that we're collecting, and this is mainly text as well as images, separating the signal that a a user or analyst might be interested from noise is challenging. So I view my role as a data scientist specifically as advocating for good data practices, um, helping to formulate and conceive the problems that our users are asking and generate useful solutions to solve and meet their uh, needs effectively with the tools that we have on hand, whether that's machine learning classifiers or more traditional statistical or analytical methods. And so over uh, time, We've built uh, a toolbox of custom classifiers and analyses and visualization tools that are aimed at sorting and uh, filtering and presenting these image and text data in uh, meaningful ways to a user. Uh, and what that means is that not only do we have you know, the, the raw documents that are coming in, but we have a number of metadata fields that can help us uh, sort and filter the data to present a user with exactly what they're looking for Uh, and run the appropriate analyses to uh, answer their questions. So uh, another aspect that uh, we feel is really important is staying on top of uh, modern data science tools and techniques. Now, since I've been here, we've gone through uh, using uh, convolutional neural networks in our classifiers to transformers like Google's LABSC, um, and now we're moving into implementing large language models and all of their uh, capabilities and and tool sets to analyze our data. And what we were in a fortuitous position uh, because of all the work we had done in the past with building out our uh, classifier and uh, analysis tool sets, because that gave us a really strong data structure and the tools to implement things like retrieval augmented generation, which is a method whereby you can have a large language model answer questions about data it's given, even if it hasn't been trained on that data. So some of these models their training is from before 2022 or something. We can still apply it to new data that it hasn't seen before and get good answers back because of all of these metadata and data enrichments that we've developed over the years. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team, or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.allthis.com. So obviously a lot going on and plenty to be excited about. What projects can you talk to us about that you're particularly excited to, to work on, what problems you and the team are solving, and the role that AI and data plays within all of this? Yeah, I think what I'm most excited about and, and have been most engaged with the, the past few months is what we're calling Discover Next, which is a platform that is heavily leveraging the emerging large language models into a more efficient and intuitive platform for analyzing and getting good insights out of the data we have for a user. So even more so than before, just being able to ask a question about the data and get usable, presentable, intuitive results in, I'll say as few words as possible, just the data you need right in front of you without having to 
mess around or, or filter with too many fields or settings. Just get to your answer as, as quickly as possible. Um, and LLMs have been a, a really amazing tool for doing this. Leveraging these large language models allows us to take our data of our multimodal, multivariate data and synthesize results that are useful to users to get to, to distill the key insights available in the data for them to make a decision or compile a report. But as great as the large language models are, we are still leaning heavily on more traditional analyses and machine learning techniques um, and good data practices to make sure that what we're feeding the large language model when it makes an interest is good information, which is key. It's the whole garbage in, garbage out point. So as much as LLMs have been an incredible tool for pulling of all of our data together and getting these amazing insights, all of the more traditional foundational data science principles are still necessary and being applied in the background to get these results. Jim, thank you for that. Obviously a lot of detail there and plenty to be excited about, which all feeds nicely into it, the next topic I wanted to cover, which is really looking at the immediate future for 2.6 technologies, the, the, the growth that you're hoping to accomplish uh, and what opportunities there are going to be for future talent uh, and how you guys go about attracting talent, playing back to the values. I know that's something that's important to you, Sadie, but Jim, if you could just set it up nicely and then and Sadie will come to you for a bit more clarity of, of what the near-term roadmap looks like. You know, in my own experience, I, I think the team at, at 2.6 is looking for talented data scientists with applicable skills from a variety of backgrounds, wherever they may be. My own background was, as I said before, uh, oceanography. And I've sometimes when I tell people that's what it is, they look at me funny, but we used a lot of fairly in-depth and statistical methods to answer questions in the research we did in oceanography. And that's, they have broader applications beyond that field. And so I brought those skills as well as the, the background uh, in machine learning as limited as it was at the time. And 2.6 was willing to allow me to develop those skills further. Um, but they were looking for problem solvers and people who know how to uh, approach and understand the problem and what needs to be done to solve it. And then there's support and, and help along the way. Um, we encourage a lot of uh, learning and, and pushing boundaries because uh, that's what we do a lot of the time. I think a lot of the skills that I had at the time translated well, and then I've learned a lot from the rest of the team being here from Sadie or some of the other data science team. And I, I think as a result, we've been effective at the, the problems that we are faced with. Yeah, and on the values component, as 2.6 was founded, kind of these companies coming together, we wanted to make sure that at the heart of the organization, we figured out what made it a great place to work. And so we just asked employees and crafted the values that we still live today. So I led the working group that created those and we really do live them. And so those are things like passion, purpose, innovation, diversity, flexibility, and grace. So we have this phrase, we're human and with innovation, it's brave enough to fail and confident enough to deliver. And we built all of these, came together and figured out what motivates us and what keeps us rowing the same direction as a team. And so we have you know, this foundation of trust and transparency at the company. And that's really made it for us the that kind of core brings us together and, and makes it easy to solve these hard problems as a team. And so what I would say for, for anyone listening is if this conversation kind of resonates with you, we have a ton of different roles open in various levels of clearance. And we also have the ability, if you're interested in getting a clearance and flexible work sites, some of the roles vary completely on client site or at the TSC office headquarters in Arlington. We have some also hybrid and, and remote roles, but we're looking for people who value um, the same things as values I just described. For instance, one of the things that I do at 2.6 is lead the DEI working group, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of our initiatives last year was hosting courageous conversations. And so we had 
virtual and in-person groups discussing things like neurodiversity, LGBTQ, and now next month uh, we're doing a women in tech group. So our leaders attend those to really understand what diverse groups need at 2.6. And as a result, we work really hard to create an environment where people feel like they belong from different backgrounds. And we really get these lenses to approach problems in a, in a creative way. And hopefully sharing out our core values through this helps us attract more of those people to come work with us. I'm sure it will. Sadie, James, thank you both so much for coming on today and, and talking to us and sharing your story. It was a, a fascinating look behind the scenes of, of two six technologies from the layout of, of the various different products and services you, you have available to the growth and, and the opportunity for people to come and, and work with you. So we, we very much appreciate it. We wish you, the team and everyone at two six technologies the best of luck in the months and years to come. And, and we very much look forward to having you back on the show again in the near future. Thank you so much for the time today. Really appreciate you sharing your platform. And if anyone's interested, they could reach out at recruiting at 26tech.com on email or come follow us on LinkedIn or just message us, us directly. Really appreciate the time again. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.allthis.com to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.